What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. Uh, today I wanted to try to uh, connect a capacitor and retest this mini fridge uh, to see if it will solar. And uh, got everything hooked up and did some playing around with it. So this is going to be a quick video because the short answer is it doesn't work. We just, and let me just go back over the parameters of these videos. We want to use small, easily purchasable, easily affordable, easily um, usable components for kind of the beginner that's getting into solar. So using huge inverters and, well, I guess the inverter's not as big a deal, but using massive charge controllers and huge solar panels and uh, full-size batteries and stuff like that maybe isn't quite in the cards here. So just to preface that before we get start getting comments that oh, you need to use a bigger battery or you need to get a bigger charge, whatever. <clears throat> um, that's not the point of this video. This video is just to try to test out common everyday appliances and loads and see if they will work on a small, affordable two or three hundred dollars worth of um, solar equipment. So anyways, what I did was I purchased a 12 volt uh, capacitor. This is kind of a car audio style capacitor. Uh, I know there's there's other uh, super capacitors that people use with solar, but this was cheap and it fits the bill. Um, so this is this is a hot mess of wiring, but basically, I uh, I wanted to use I I didn't use the normal Willet Solar rig because basically I wanted to try to bypass the charge controller. That charge controller will only give me 20 amps of power, and we know from our last video that this mini fridge will draw more than 20 amps for a brief period of time, and so that was going to be the limiting factor, and also our batteries. But if we could if we could uh, add a capacitor to the system to provide that burst of large amounts of power along with our small little sealed lead acid batteries, um, we should be okay. And we would have, except that we're still limited by the inverter because the inverter will not handle the, the voltages that we're dealing with. When we bypass the charge controller, we're dealing with the you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 volts from the, the solar panel. And, um, and that's, that's how many volts the capacitor is, is holding. I don't know if you can read the LEDs there, but it's, it's uh, currently it's only 13.9, but it was 18 or 19 a minute ago. So when you turn on the inverter, of course now it's not gonna do it for me. Probably because the uh, capacitor is down to 13 something. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and try to test this thing. I swear it wasn't working a minute ago. Maybe we'll actually get a good video out of this after all. So let me plug in the mini fridge and see what happens. See if we can pull enough juice here to get it to start up. Nope. voltage isn't budging on the capacitor so I'm not sure exactly yeah low voltage the voltage gets too low so this still didn't work <laughs> and I can't quite explain I'm gonna have to process this information and figure out what's going on at first it wasn't working because the inverter was getting too much uh, voltage and so it wouldn't even try to turn on the mini fridge now that the voltage is, is a little bit lower more doable um, in the doable range for the inverter, we're still drawing down too much power on these batteries in this capacitor. And this should be more than plenty to, to power up this little one amp AC uh, mini fridge. So anyway, it's still a failure. Still don't know why, but uh, it's just not gonna work for small, for, for this video series. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to something else. Just thought it might be interesting for you guys to see uh, yet another failure and maybe maybe some people will learn something from it. Thanks for watching guys.